if you're thinking about starting your own travel baseball team, there's there's a lot of stuff that you're going to need to do. Um, it takes a lot of time, first of all. It's not just getting a couple players together and, and you know, finding some places to play. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that you need to do before you can, you know, start playing in the tournaments. And I recommend, you know, if you're really serious about starting a travel baseball team, you need at least six months to get everything going and, and start it up. Um, you got to recruit the players. You need to determine a budget, how much money you're going to spend, how much money you're going to charge for the players. Um, you know, you're going to have to find a practice facility, at, uh, either a baseball indoor facility or a practice field to, to play at. Um, you're also going to have to obviously come up with a team name and team uniforms, order the uniforms. You're going to have to collect the, the money from the parents. Then you have to register your team with, you know, all the different, there's a hundred different um, organizations that you can register with, like the USSA, Triple Crown, AAU, um, Nations, uh, you know, all those different uh, baseball organizations that you can register your team with. Now, the best to go through is probably the AAU, because if you register through the AAU, I'm pretty sure you're certified through all of the other ones. So even if you don't even play in any AAU tournaments, you're still you're still eligible for all the other tournaments. And I think it's only about $300 for the AAU registration. So that's not too bad at all. Um, there's a few things you need to realize when you're recruiting, you know, when you go ahead to start recruiting your your team, the guys that are going to play for you. First, you have to decide whether you're going to go for studs. You know, you're trying to make a team that's going to win a lot of games and you're going to go and recruit all these big studs around the area or are you going to look for decent players good players something that you can put a good team together but guys that have really good parents you know I think if you go the second route you're going to end up having a lot um, more stress-free season um, because I, I tell you what it, it depends a lot on what kind of parents you got around you you don't want to be stuck with a bunch of um, you know complainers or, or just guys that can't parents that can't get their kid to the practices and games and you know people that you can't that aren't you know going to be able to pay you right up front and all you know there's just so much stuff that goes on if you got a good set of parents and, and the kids good at baseball that's the best combination so you know decide whether you're going to go with this you know looking for the studs or or the good parents um with that being said you know tryouts are a good way to to bring in some guys that you haven't seen now, most of the guys that you're going to get are not going to be from tryouts. So, you know, most of the guys that you're going to get, you're going to know from seeing them in leagues or, or um, you know, calling around, calling coaches, things like that. In the tryouts, you don't, you're not necessarily going to get that many people. But if you do decide to get, do a tryout to try to see some new players, you're going to want to advertise in the um, newspapers and online Craigslist, different baseball websites. Um, you're going to want to get the word out there because the last thing you want to do is pay rent a field and only have like four or five kids show up. That would be the worst thing. So if you're going to do the tryouts, make sure you advertise it right and get the guys out there. Um, also, when, you, when you're starting the team, you want to accept you know as many guys as you can I mean, not as many as you can. You don't want 100 guys out there saying you could play for the one team. But, you know, if you got 25, 30 guys saying that they want to play, that's good. Because when it comes down to it, when the payment comes down and the season starts and getting around, you're in reality, by the end of the season, you're probably only going to have around 15 guys. So starting off with a little bit of higher higher number is not that bad in a case when you're starting your own travel baseball team. Um, as far as determining the budget, there's, you know, obviously a lot of costs required in starting a, your own travel baseball team. You got the practice field, like we talked about, uh, incorporating the team. Like if you're going to do a nonprofit organization, you're going to have to, you know, uh, incorporate the team. Or if you were going to go through another route to get the insurance, that's another thing, the team insurance. Registering the team, we talked about that, it's about 300 Registering the players, the tournament fees, you know, each tournament is different. Um and what they charge to be a part of the tournament. Um, you're going to have to pay the coaches. You're going to have to figure out a, a rate to pay the coaches. Now, this is all going to be added into your expenses, to your costs. Um, and then you've got the equipment, like the practice balls, fungos, extra set of catcher's gear, maybe a bat or two for the team. Um, I suggest the players get their own helmets and cups, obviously. Uh, 
so you're not spending money on that. Um, and then you got like little stuff like scorebook, um, things like that. Of course, you're going to need the uniforms, um, which is, you know, you can either go for a nice uniform, get the full uniform that matches top and bottom with a nice hat, or you can just get like one of those, you know, um, dry fit shirts and have the kids get their get their all white pants, you know, um, and then get a little uh, adjustable hat in the back. It all depends on how much you want to spend and how much you want to charge the parents. You got to think about what kind of area you're in too. Are you in a, a lower income community or are you in a, in a community that you know the parents don't mind shelling out a couple extra bucks for you know nice uniforms so you gotta think about that too um, you know and these things can add up really quick you're looking at you know thousands of dollars really fast just for those things and you know when you break it down you have to add up what you think your costs are gonna be and then divide it by the number of kids so you know you're looking at um, if you've got you know say 15 kids that you think you're gonna end up with and you've got eight thousand dollars right you're looking over five hundred dollars for each kid now that's that's not including the travel that they're gonna have to pay for so going to the hotels and eating like the parent you have to let the parents up front know that these are ad additional charges that they will incur on their own going to you know you're not gonna pay for the trip obviously you can incorporate that into your price but then you're gonna have to charge these uh, parents a lot more so obviously you want to let them know about that when you're you know how you're gonna work it when you're when you're telling them about the team um, the other thing you want to do is let them know if you got a if you got a good coach or something you you know you try to sell them sell the team to the parents you know why it's gonna be a good good fit for their son are you playing high level competition are there gonna be a lot of scouts around you have a really good coach that's you know got some instruction you know there's all there's benefits to travel travel baseball and I think that you know selling the, the the good points of the team is not a bad thing obviously you're trying to get guys in there so um, you want to tell them why it's a good fit for them there's also you could also go the route of being a nonprofit organization um, I think they call it like a 501 C or something like that nonprofit organization um, I don't really know much about that except you can go to the irs.gov site and check out charities and nonprofits and they'll tell you more about how to um, you know form a nonprofit organization and that way you can go around collect um, you know from local businesses and collect get uh, sponsorships and donations and they can write it off on their taxes and <clears throat> um, you can go that route if you decide to um, as far as collecting the money from the parents I suggest getting a large uh, Part of it up front as a down payment just so you know that the parents and the players are committed and then before the season starts collect the rest of it because if you get you know if you get start letting them get deeper and deeper into the season you know you're gonna have a hard time getting this money not not that I think anyone's gonna well I don't you know I don't know what kind of players or parents you're getting but you know I, I like to think people are good for the most part not that they're not gonna pay you but it may take a lot longer if you don't have a set date and you know for when they need to pay so collect them the the second half of the money or the the rest of the money before the season starts um, and then you should be good also um, you want to have um, you know you want to have you want to make it clear to the parents that any overly involved parents um, are you know not gonna it's not gonna work out that way you've got to let them know from the bat that you know you're not going to discuss playing time you're not going to discuss anything like this it's going to be discuss it's going to be discussed in the beginning of the season but you know there there should be no problems arising everything should be set out front before the season starts um, so they should know what they're getting into the players should know what they're getting into you, your coach knows what he's getting into and you whoever's starting the team knows what they, you know you're getting everyone else into so um, the other thing is you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a long season you're gonna you're gonna have unhappy parents you know do you, you have to think about that before you start the team do you really want to deal with all this is it worth it is it worth all this money and organizing and, and setting up it, what is what is your your underlying goal behind starting your own travel baseball team um, and really think to yourself is it worth it 